And, and what about employee ownership? When did, you, when did you decide that that was the glue? Did you know that from the get-go, or did you sort of learn that along the way? Well, I found it out pretty quick because to recruit people, you had to ask, offer them a, them a piece of the action, a place in the company of significance, good associates to work with, and the right environment. And so we chose La Jolla, and we chose the location overlooking the cove, and we didn't have to recruit very hard. <laughs> I think I think if you had a view of the cove, you might you might not need the stock. I don't know. No, <laughs> Gene, you're nodding your head. You were, as I said, employee number 32. What was it like being recruited by Bob Beister? Uh, well, Bob Beister, without a doubt, and I think anyone that's been recruited by him would agree, is the best one-on-one -on -one recruiter this world has ever known. <laughs> and there's just there's no doubt about it. He always uh, goes after uh, there's after the most senior. Uh, person that he can find for a, for a particular position and when he sits down to recruit you uh, you're you, you better have a you, no matter whether you're planning on it or not you're going to come to work for, for Bob <laughs> before it's over it may take him a while but, but you will and and going back to the employee ownership that was a big part in the early days of uh, uh, Bob was sharing the ownership uh, uh, very uh, very widely with everyone who joined they didn't pay us much now, but uh, but he did pay as much as uh, as he was making almost. I remember uh, I had to take a cut to come from the government to work for SAIC, but I was making within five hundred dollars a year of what Bob was making. <laughs> but so he kept his salary low. So, <laughs> but but we but we had the ownership, and that's what really counted. You say in the early days. Now, Bill and Tom, you obviously joined a lot later. Uh, had stock ownership diminished as a, as a factor at, by that time? No, well, I'll speak on my part, uh, absolutely not. And um, Bob was just as good at recruiting later as he was <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it is interesting that, I, I don't know the exact numbers of the history, but very early on within the first few years of the company, and my role at the time wasn't in the company, but I was with Price Waterhouse in the early years and, and served as the audit partner. But um, I think your ownership went from like 100% down to 10% almost in the first year. Yeah. I mean, and that's very unusual in terms of an early stage company. And I think um, certainly the five years I was CFO, your ownership was never more than 1.2 or 1.3%, which I think is also unusual. Uh, so no, it didn't diminish because the company was still sharing its stock widely uh, at the time and it was part of the formula. Yeah, I, I joined the company in 1990. Um, we were approaching a billion dollars in revenue, had about 9,000 employees. Um, the conventional wisdom from some advisors were, you know, the, car, the company had enjoyed a very parabolic curve in terms of value creation, and people said, this, you know, that game's over. The company is hitting this wall of a billion dollars, and, you know, don't expect the kind of returns we've had in the past. Uh, good luck. But and Bill, they, they said the same thing when, when we were at $10 million. <laughs> and also, also at $100 million. I, I've been told, you know, there were always these barriers that the system that Bob built wouldn't survive, and it did, and it did handsomely. It, it's interesting to note that in 1978, the first year I came to audit, the company's revenues were $80 million, and today the company does that level of revenue every two and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> or else. <laughs> You know, how, how do you manage a really decentralized organization like this and, and give the individual projects the latitude to, to run as far and fast and make as much money as they can, but also keep them all uh, somehow tied into SAIC? With very tight financial controls. <laughs> and these two gentlemen sitting here that Bob has invited are two examples of the kind of, uh, of senior financial people that's necessary in a decentralized